Have you ever had someone cross a line so badly that it made you question everything about your relationship with them? Well, that's exactly what I'm grappling with right now. Last night, one of my closest friends' bodies shamed my seven-year-old son in front of a group of friends, and I can't stop thinking about it. Now, I'm left wondering if I'm overreacting by considering ending a decade-long friendship over this. Here's what happened. I'm reaching out to Reddit because I could not stop thinking about this. I need to know if I'm overreacting to this situation. I, 27, was at a friend's house last night with a group of friends of over a decade. I had a kid when I was on the younger side. I am a single mother, so L am the only one in my friend group with a child besides my older sister, who was also there. My son, we'll call him Adam, is seven, and I'll be fully transparent. He's a chubby kid. My ethnic background results in my build being fairly tall for a woman, and I've always been on the thicker side with plenty of muscle. However, since having a child, the pandemic, and working from home, again, I'll be transparent, I've gained a little more weight than usual as well. My son's biological father also has an ethnic background that is known for being thicker built. As a result, my son had had a larger build since birth, even when he was skinnier. I hate referencing my son's body like this. He always had thick legs and arms and always felt heavier than he looked. Now, back to the story. Last night, one of my closest friends out of this group sort of came out of nowhere with a comment saying, Walking is very important. We should all get to walking more, especially up and Adam. I sort of shot him a look because it felt out of nowhere. But I didn't say anything because he's right. Walking is good for you after all. He then continued and said, Okay, listen, I'm gonna just say it, Adam is too big, and you guys need to lose some weight ASAP. This completely took me back, and I said immediately, You can't just say something like that. He half apologized while laughing, and continued to talk about how he's not in sports, and that I clearly don't motivate him to do anything, I guess because I'm also chubby. He was laughing hysterically and making fun of how my son looked and his body, and it just felt so horrible. He then went on to say that he would do better as a mentor for my son. Trying to curve the conversation in a positive way, I said, You know what? That would be helpful, actually. I'm a single mom, and it is difficult to always get him to sports or get out and going. I would definitely like to work out more and get into shape. Why don't we do something all together? He then started going on about how much better he's gonna do, and how Adam needs to stop being lazy and real guidance. Now, I'm not going to list excuses or deep dive into the stuff we've been through in the past few years, but I will say it's been a lot. What I will say, though, is that this friend and I are close, but I've lived in a different state for several years, and he definitely doesn't know enough about our home life to have made those comments. I have played women's professional football for two years and my son was also in football and soccer. We go on walks daily with our dog. A recent traumatic event left me severely injured and resulted in my son being traumatized as well. He now has severe separation anxiety, and we only just now worked up to me being able to leave for the store around the corner while he's with my mom, sister, nephew, and stepdad. My son also has a lot of sensory issues and a phobia of bugs. I wish I was kidding. It's gotten so bad that taking him to outside events without complete meltdowns is hard now. And yes, we have been working on it, but it is difficult, especially in the summer months. I have still found ways to get him into indoor sports and still get time in the sun at parks, zoos, and aquariums. I've made my best effort as a single parent and admit I have failed. There have been times when we couldn't afford the healthy option or times I've worked 12-hour shifts and haven't been able to cook. I will take responsibility as a parent that my child has gotten chubbier, but why make fun of and comment on a child's weight? I would understand if he was severely overweight or obese and a doctor or family member had to step in and say something, but even then, I don't feel like the way it was said was kind or constructive. It felt like he was waiting for an opportunity to make fun of my weight and my son and to outright say you could parent my child better is way over the line, especially as a childless male. I've talked to my sister and other family members about it, and she was also uncomfortable with the comments. 
I think I'm going to talk to him because I value our friendship. But would I be overreacting if I took a step back from our friendship entirely? A quick edits for clarification. First, thank you to everyone who has supported me. I honestly did not think I would get this many responses. But I appreciate all of the insight and kind comments. Unfortunately, I don't have anything juicy to update. Other than that, my friend has texted me since the incident, but only invited me to a group event. I haven't responded yet, but I'm contemplating if I should talk to him there or bring it up over text slash phone call. Either way, I will update you all once the conversation is over. For clarification. My son was not there when the comments were made. He will sometimes accompany me to events with this friend, but like I said, all of these friend groups are child-free, so we usually do not do child-friendly activities. When we did child-centered activities together, he never brought up anything negative with Adam and always said kind things. My son regularly visits the doctor, and his weight has never been brought up as an issue. Any pediatrician has never recommended any diets or weight loss because he's seven and growing. I did get worried because of his comments that maybe I was blind to Adam's weight gain as his mother. Still, family and friends I've asked have confirmed, without bias, that he is a perfectly healthy boy. We eat a generally healthy diet on a day-to-day -day basis. I impressed him with the importance of diet and exercise, and we have cut out fast food, save for emergencies and road trips. And he has signed up for a ton of summer camps and sports. That's another reason why his comments felt strange. He is aware of how much effort I am putting into making sure he is more active since the incident that threw our life out of whack. Adam has only been out of sports for four months. He hasn't been signed up since due to us moving and his separation anxiety. Still, he was a very active kid before everything happened. I cut out some dialogue for length purposes, but I said more to him to shut down the conversation. I said multiple times to drop it and call him an asshole by the end. He didn't take any of it seriously, and sort of rolled his eyes at my attempts to call him out for being a jerk. I shouldn't have just let it go, but I felt like I wasn't going to be hurt one way or another. There were some drinks head by earlier in the night. I see a lot of comments mentioning that he might be interested in me. My friend is gay, so it is strictly platonic. I don't think he's nagging me to be with me unless he's some sort of LGBT double agent. All of your insight helped me decide not to remain friends with this person. However, in light of recent events, it seems I wouldn't have had to anyway. So, on to the update. I mentioned in my original post that everything this friend said about my child was in a room full of mutual friends. Well, not too long ago, we all attended a gay pride event together and ended up hanging out. I left early mom duties, but they all continued to hang out and drink. After I left, the friend who insulted my kid Jerry and our other mutual friend Kyle, who owned the apartment, got into an argument that grew into a physical fight. Jerry got extremely violent and ended up biting Kyle's finger and punching his girlfriend in the face when she tried to intervene. He also broke over $1,000 in worth of things in their apartment, and from what I heard, the entire place was covered in blood. The next morning, I get a call from Jerry, and he tells me his version of what happened. He was drunk. He blacked out. He had no clue until the next morning. It wasn't that bad. I then spoke with Kyle and his girlfriend and got the full version of the night's events, which I have detailed above. They also spoke with me about how disappointing and uncomfortable his comments about my son Adam made them as they all know and love my son and know he is well taken care of. Long story short, we have all decided to end our friendship with Jerry. His use of manipulation, the blatant lying, and his strange and rude comments have all come to the surface, and as sad as we all are to be losing a friend of over a decade, this has to happen. He is not happy about it and has been contacting us all frequently, calling us assholes, and saying we all abandoned him. Anyway, it's not the cheeriest of updates, but thank you all again for sticking it through. I'm glad I was able to make my decision to distance myself without losing my other friends in the group. Still, I feel so horrible that they had to go through that. My gripe with Jerry seems so small now compared to what happened. It seems to have traumatized Kyle and his girlfriend. 
but I'm glad we can all be done with the drama and drunken tirades. This morning, I woke up early to order coffee so my husband could take our son to pick it up and surprise me. They also went grocery shopping, picked out my favorite breakfast, and came home. My husband made half of the breakfast and then asked me to make the other half. I didn't mind until he went upstairs to go to the bathroom and fell asleep for 45 minutes, leaving me to handle everything. Later, I was doing a mountain of dishes when he asked me to make a grocery list. I was in the middle of washing dishes and asked if he could do it himself this one time. He insisted I help, leading to an argument. He accused me of lacking patience, and I, frustrated, sarcastically wished him a happy Father's Day. This set him off, and he refused to get ingredients for dinner, bought food only for himself and our kids, and gave me the silent treatment. He says I went too far and now I'm questioning if I'm in the wrong. Am I the asshole? My husband made half of the breakfast and then asked me to make the other half. No problem. He acknowledged that he was asking me to do the work and still taking credit for the benefit of our kids' experience and memories. It was no problem until he went upstairs to go to the bathroom, and after 45 minutes I walked upstairs to check on him, and he was asleep in our bed. He slept the entire afternoon. Later that day, I was doing the absolute mountain of dishes, my third load for the day, that's another story, and he asked me to make a grocery list. I asked if he could please make the list because I was in the middle of doing the dishes, and I further tried to coax him by playfully using Mother's Day. I really didn't want to drop what I was doing to look in the fridge. He was already standing right in front of me to tell him what we needed for dinner. He knows the ingredients and could easily look at himself but he insisted I help him. I was super frustrated, so I took a deep breath, washed and dried my hands, and then opened the fridge and started telling him what we needed. He could sense my frustration and called me on it. I explained that I was hoping he could make a list himself just this once because I was doing the dishes. I explained that when I make a grocery list, I just look at what we have and write down what we don't have, and I didn't understand why he needed my help. He started talking over me and saying that I should just have told him if I had a problem making a grocery list with him. I told him that I did communicate that with him, and he doubled down and told me that I needed to learn some patience. I smiled and said, Happy Father's Day, because it was the nicest thing I could think to say. That completely set him off. He went off on me, refused to get ingredients to make our dinner, bought dinner for only himself and our kids, and has been giving me the silent treatment for over an hour. He says I went too far. Am I the asshole? Ida, wow, I did not realize I was going to wake up to so much to read. Thank you for all of your feedback. I've been enjoying myself brewed coffee and taking in your responses this morning. I have a lot to look over and think about. I know divorce is the obvious answer. Edit 2 No. Divorce isn't the obvious answer for this specific incident. Edit. 3. I mean, the idea of divorce is not solely based on this one specific incident. Several people have commented that everyone is jumping to divorce based on this situation. It is more complex than this one day. No, I'm not using Reddit as a poll to decide whether or not to leave my marriage. TIL How to Make Reddit Paragraphs both of our mothers are dead, unfortunately. Our children are six and under. It is common for parents to help and facilitate the day. Six-year-olds and toddlers can't be responsible for celebrating their parents. I didn't expect anything from him. I know it's just a hallmark consumerism holiday. People who have commented are correct in saying that this incident is just representative of every other day, but magnified by the fact that Mother's Day was a particularly shitty day to choose to be particularly shitty. I felt like maybe I was tough for making the petty comment. I am ND, and sometimes I have trouble picking up on if I did something wrong that I maybe didn't realize was wrong to say or do. I appreciate all of the anecdotes of your strength and ability to move forward after leaving an exhausting marriage. It is inspiring. Edit answers to your questions slash update four. Since Sunday, I have not lifted a single finger for baby Sinclair, my internal nickname for him. 
unless it directly impacts our kids, every time he requests my help or to do something for him that he can do himself. I just use my absolute sweetest voice to let him know he doesn't need my help and I believe in his ability to complete the task himself. Then I smile and walk away. The third time I did this, he said I was making him uneasy. I could not help but to lull, which made him announce that he felt more uneasy. I know it wasn't kind, but I calmly told him he was a pathetic human. I told him I'm sorry it has to be me, but someone in his life needs to tell him to grow the fuck up. I told him I care about and love him, but I will not tolerate being treated with disrespect for even one more day. He said I was abusive. The actual audacity. I spared the divorce conversation for safety, and because I have said I want to leave many times, and financially, it isn't possible right now. Side note, I tried to leave last year because he was making me feel unsafe, and his behavior was erratic. I went to the emergency room in a mental breakdown and told them about the abuse, which they noted in detail on my file. They asked about any plans to escape, and I told them I had them covered. I also answered their questions about my plan. I had been planning for our escape for a year leading up to this. They told me they had to document the reported abuse in my file. I asked them to check my chart to ensure it was not tied to his account. They looked at it in front of me and said they made sure he wasn't on my emergency contacts or attached to my chart in any way. But then guess who got an email with my chart notes detailing his abuse and my exit plan before I even got home? I had to cool things down and start with a new plan I kept entirely to myself. At this point, though, he knew I had saved up money to leave, so most of my savings were depleted within a few months. I eventually left with our kids with far less savings, and it didn't take long for me to realize I could not sustain the cost of my original bills, still in my name, and new bills in addition to legal assistance and the overall cost of starting over. Our leaving caused him to spiral and he went back to therapy. Soon after, we started to dip our toes into visiting each other, mostly because I didn't want to leave our kids with him. We stuck to outdoor public activities as a family. He has always been able to wear me down and talk me out of a divorce, and this ended up no differently. Even though I know I'm not an anomaly, I felt ashamed and like a complete failure for going back. Surprisingly, he never actually changed, slash s. End of side note. Anyway, back to the present day, I began to gray rock to throw off his cycle of attempting to rope me back into the argument from the other day. I have calmly listened to him gush over his love for our family and how much he loves and appreciates me and thinks I am an amazing mom. He says he loves me, but all I hear in my head is his voice screaming, fucking bitch at me. It all sounds so obviously disingenuous. I told him his words mean literally nothing while his behavior is the same. It's like saying waffles, have legs, it sounds unbelievable, and if I don't see it with my own eyes, I'm not believing it. I told him regardless of whether, in the end, we stay together or not, we need to go back to therapy as a duo and separately. I told him he needs to take steps today to move forward with therapy and treating his mental health appropriately. He agreed, but no evidence of walking waffles yet. I am surprised at my ability to completely refuse to do anything he can do himself. I'm more surprised that he's doing the tasks himself. I've tried this before, and he ultimately bullies me into doing the task. Not this time. He keeps complaining about his results in ways that are so juvenile and manipulative, always leaving the impression that if I had just done it for him, it would have been done correctly. I just smiled and told him he did a good job with the task. I told him that it sounded like he needed more practice, and eventually, it would become second nature. I feel his attempts to make me miserable, but it is rolling right off me, at least for now. I cannot express enough how much I appreciate the support and validation here. I appreciate the married people who have shared their day as a healthy couple on Sunday and every day. For those of you who have asked why I am taking to the internet with this in the first place, I've been isolated from my circle for so long that my relationships no longer exist. I have a limited family period and no family nearby. My mom is dead. My dad sucks. My siblings mostly suck. 
I have no friends. I work virtually and don't have friendships with my coworkers because we rarely socialize and have opportunities to bond. I don't have opportunities to interact with adults very often. Isn't that the beauty of the internet? Despite my logical brain, years of gaslighting, along with my neurodivergence, have made it sometimes feel impossible to trust my judgment. Suppose you are offended by me posting this and have taken the time to voice your disgust for me in my post. In that case, I just want to let you know I have processed and directed your complaints to the correct department. First, since Mother's Day, he has not shown any sort of attempts for progress surprise. He has lost his control and repeatedly called me a F-seeking BTCH and other awesome pet names for his minor irritations towards me example. I asked him if he wanted my help bringing in groceries. Apparently, he wanted to do it himself to let me relax, and my offering ruined his plan, so he was essentially throwing an adult version of a tantrum. I explained that it doesn't feel like a genuine gesture, especially because now I'm being yelled at for offering to help. LOL. Okay, pal. At one point, I became petty whoops. I told him to use I statements because that's his go-to therapy speak, which he uses on me as a dog whistle during arguments and therapy appointments. He lost his shit, which then made me laugh because I literally do not understand if this is really his perception of reality. I can't take him seriously. I laugh more now than ever, and it's not to mock him. I just can't control my disbelief and don't know how else to cope. Second, I have realized that while I do love and care about him, it is clear that he does not respect me as a person, a mother, or his partner. He doesn't respect our kids. I can't realistically continue living with someone who tries to control my entire life. What kind of life is that to live? I took advice from many comments left on my original post and reached out to friends and family I had been isolated from. The reception was better than I anticipated. I didn't expect the hurt I felt when I found out every single one of them said they wondered if I was in an abusive marriage, but not one of them ever asked me directly when I completely withdrew. I don't blame them, but it was hard to ignore the pain I felt from that. This was also why I never contacted anyone when things got really bad. It seemed like they had their own lives to worry about and weren't concerned about my absence. A couple of the people I contacted were lifelong friends I had to formally end friendships with when I started dating my husband because of his jealousy. I never got to mourn those friendships. It felt like a piece of me that had been broken began to heal. It was a positive step because some of my family members were relieved I opened up to them. Now, I don't feel so isolated and alone. So, thank you to everyone who encouraged me to do that. Four. I am unsure of my next steps, but I feel more confident about my path forward. I do know that from here on out, I'm doing whatever the fuck I want DW, as safely as I can, 